G'day and welcome back to Fading Margins. Well, I've been having a whale of the time last, uh, last uh, well, about a thick of a week now. Um, sun's been shining, it's been warm, it's been beautiful. I've been cooking outdoors um, pretty much every day, doing the prep in here uh, and going outside. And my weapon of choice has been this fella here. I'll uh, pan you down in a sec. It's called a poiki. It's, uh, it's a three-load cauldron. Uh, hails from uh, Holland originally. Hence Dutch oven, and um, I've been using it to cook all sorts of things. Tonight I'm going to do uh, pork spare ribs uh, with vegetables. I'll put it on now. It's uh, 20 to 4, so I'll give it a good couple of hours, and then I might whip them off. Uh, the veggies will be ready, and uh, I'll throw them on the on the barbecue outside just to brown them off. Anyway, hope you'll hang around, and we'll see how we get on. Talk to you in a sec. Okay, so this is my beautiful baby. This is a number three, um, which means it holds uh, 7.8 liters. I don't know what three means, but uh, it, uh, as I say, it holds 7.8 liters. Uh, cast iron lid, big deep cauldron, three little, three little legs underneath, coals go underneath. I've already uh, pre-lit some uh, charcoal outside, so we'll cut up some veggies, cut up the meat, get it in the poiki, and get cracked. Well, right, no, first step uh, to cooking one of these, much the same as cooking in a regular camp oven, is oil or some sort of fat. Uh, I don't put, I don't lather it in. There are those who put half a cup of oil in there, just a, a swill, and then I like to sort of swirl it around. Now, if we're in the bush, you would just be uh, cooking the poiki and cleaning up afterwards. Because we're at home, what I do is, when I've finished, I scour it out, dry it, oil it, and then, and then season it up in a super hot oven. So I'm not really saving any money in terms of eco-friendliness. I'm burning, burning the candle up with the wick at both ends. But, you know, needs must. Uh, so yeah, so we oil it up. Now we're gonna cut some onions. We're gonna put some onions in the bottom. And, uh, and we'll go from there. We'll Flash a bit of the good stuff while we're here. We'll get a little bit of a grease up as well. Right. All right, knife of choice tonight is uh, my Dexter Russell uh, Green River Hunter. For, for food preparation and meat cutting and that sort of thing. Uh, even the whittling, hard to beat. Cracking tool. This is my the one I uh, handled with uh, some sort of random wood. Uh, before we're done here now I'll go out and grab the other one I put a horn put horn handles on that uh, it's sitting out in the sunshine because uh, the horn's got a slight developed a slight crack I was a little over enthusiastic with the rasp done my research and backfilled it with uh, super glue and so uh, we're going to um, let me just rub that down, but I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a sneak peek of how she turned out. It turned out really nice. I haven't patinaed it yet, but it's developing a patina because I've used it. Right, so the onions, you just chuck them in. Ben Kruger, the late Ben Kruger, South African actor, uh, has a poiki cost. Poiki cost means cooking in a poiki, I think. It's Afrikaans. Uh, as a channel, still extant in, uh, on YouTube. So all things poiki, he's your man. Uh, loves his tuck. Some good recipes. Uh, for, uh, for veggies, it's only me, so I'm not going to do loads. I'll do a couple of carrots and potatoes. And the great thing about this is you're not losing anything. You've got all the goodness is, uh, stays in the pot. And then when the time comes to decide what you want to do next, with the leftovers, you can just put them in the fridge. So we've had We've gone from having uh, one day I did chicken, I did pork, lamb, and chicken wings, all in here with vegetables, and then we had leftovers. Uh, the lamb leftovers I had for breakfast this morning. Um, the vegetable leftovers I had for lunch. It just goes on and on. It's just, it's just great, and uh, it's a lot of fun because you don't have to do very much, and all you got to do is put it in the pot and uh, let nature and time and 
heat and cast iron uh, do its work. Now, admittedly, I'm probably going a bit heavy here. I grew up in a large family. I had uh, two sons. Well, I've still got two sons, but they don't live here anymore. Um, so I'm just used to cooking a lot. So with those, I like a beetroot. Uh, so we're going to have a beetroot as well. Might have two. So we'll just take that off, take the root off. And then just uh, give it a tidy up. Not to be too particular. The thing to remember with it, this uh, that I've found so far, and I'm only a beginner, is to make sure that your seasonings work together. And the other day I did uh, I did a recipe, I called it the barnyard sands the bull. So, uh, so it had uh, chicken, pork and uh, lamb in it, no beef. Uh, and I seasoned each, I put them in in layers, and I seasoned each layer. So the lamb had thyme and rosemary, the pork had sage. Um, there was, a, there was garlic in it, um, and the chicken had uh, cumin and, ca and coriander and pepper, and that worked really, really well. That was that went off a storm. There we go. Oh. This will be picky if you can be, eh? So there we go. They go in there. Right, and then I go over to the sink, back again. So, spare ribs. I apologize to my American friends, these are not American standard spare ribs, these are just British supermarket standard spare ribs, so they're not enormous. But they taste okay. I like to lay them on and then um, hit them with a bit of French sea salt. A bit of thyme, a bit of sage. Maybe a touch of coriander. There we go. And some uh, red and black pepper. Run that in. In the in it goes. I might rearrange these because what, what I find is if you get the ones that, where you've got a rib that's got an arch in it, that works really really well in the bottom. It keeps it up off the pan. They look pretty flat. Right, so uh, what did I say? A bit of salt, pepper, a bit of sage. Oh, I love sage. You can look at this and say, well, "Blimey, Steve, that's that's some seasoning." But actually, it's not a lot of seasoning. I, I watch you know, shows on YouTube and. TV, and particularly with game, you get a, there is a tendency, I think, to, to over season. I'm with the late great Malcolm Douglas, who said, uh, you know, a bit of salt, don't have to go mad, let the, let the meat speak for itself. That's really what you want. You know? and that's more than enough meat for me. Um, so I'm probably going to, I think I'll freeze that one. Right, so. Meat's in, seasoned, looks good. Right, back again. And then the veggies go in. Don't be shy, just chuck them in. I like them around the edges, personally. All right. Just like that. And that is how I do it. Well, how I do it, anyway. Right, so uh, lid goes on. Voila. You can pack it all the way to the top. Um, if you've got lots of people and you've got a lot of, a lot of stuff, right? So we have poiki. 
they weigh quite a bit so just be careful how you go they're not light so you have to be a bit careful how you go you can't be you know you put them in the oven if you drop them on the door on the oven door as you're pulling it out you're going to go right through the door and if you trip over um, on the way to the coals you're likely to smash them okay what we got oh look at that couldn't ask for better and we good that's it that's all she wrote that's all you need to worry about I'll sit there for a couple of hours after a couple of hours the veggies will be cooked and the meat will be falling off the bone all right guys so there we are there's the ribs there's the veg the aroma is to die for I've just fired up the barbie now throwing a bag of charcoal in there and we will um, I'll throw the ribs on just to give them a bit of color a bit of crisp uh, and then it's time to chow down hey guys uh, welcome back to the kitchen uh, while we were in here I said uh, I'd bring you up to speed on the uh, second Dexter Russell uh, those of you who uh, subscribe or frequent the channel you'll remember I did a video I think it was entitled Knives Unlimited um, about uh, building your own uh, and I showed you this one this is my Dexter Russell Green River Hunter they've been making this knife I understand since the 1830s or this pattern there is damage makes a difference um, I won't go through the history of this particular knife again if you wanted that you can go and uh, check out the other video um, but I really like it I this is this has become like a you know, to use that expression a go-to if I go to the drawer to pick out a knife to do any sort of preparation food preparation that sort of thing this is the knife I pick uh, and perhaps that's not surprising given the lineage of these blades uh, it's quite chunky fits my hand my long skinny fingers go right around it's nice you can choke up on it there's nothing in the way um, I might might have wished for a little more meat uh, on the, behind the flat grind but I'm very happy and uh, works really 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 well um, so overjoyed with the with the the prototype if you will how did I get on with the other well I said I was going to opt for horn um, with most of the knives you've seen in the previous video they had uh, red fiber liners I didn't want red fiber liners again uh, I discovered that, um, that there's there are hobby shops that sell sheets I suspect it's some sort of composite sheets of wood very thin like ply uh, so I bought a piece of mahogany uh, and I used that which added a certain complexity to putting the thing together uh, and I went for black horn and here she is I have not coffee patina this this is um, from use while she's in the rough okay uh, again brass pins you can see there that's the mahogany liner you can also see where Steve hasn't bothered to clean the blade up uh, the arrow around here before he's put the knife together gets even worse on the bottom too much of a hurry clean it up here okay it, it did indeed have a split you can see the line here and I filled that up with um, went on some various forums and filled it up with super glue let it dry sanded it back uh, and it, you wouldn't know it's absolutely bloody marvelous so there you are that's the second Dexter Russell in uh, Buffalo Horn with mahogany liners this is my first Dexter Russell in uh, some identified wood with red fiber liners and uh, as I say great little knife uh, you, can do, you can get it for around 20 pounds it's very reasonably priced for the blank you can dress it up however you like it's not rocket science if I can do it anybody can so there you go uh, once again number one in wood number two in buffalo horn till we meet again this is Stephen Fetty Margins wishing you all health happiness every blessing and I will catch you on the next one bye for now